Interpretation of Statutes Unit 1 So let's start with the meaning of interpretation. According to Solomon, interpretation means interpretation of statute means the process by which the courts seek to ascertain the meaning of legislature through the medium of authoritative forms in which it is expressed. And according to Cooley, it means the art of finding true sense of any form of words or the sense which author intend to convey or derive same idea from them which author intend to convey. So in simple words, interpretation of statutes is nothing but trying to find the true meaning of the statute. If we have any statute, any act, then the court tries to find the meaning of that act and it is called interpretation of statute. Intention of legislature. So this has been asked for 10 marks many times. Intention of legislature. So what is this intention of legislature? Basic principle. The statute is edict of legislature and conventional way of interpretation interpreting is to seek the intention of its maker. So whenever we are interpreting a statute, the conventional way is to seek the intention of its maker. So the one who made the law, what what was his intention in making that legislature? We see that in interpreting in, in interpreting a statute. This is the basic principle. Explanation. So according to Salman, the duty of the judicature is to discover and act upon the true intention of legislature under maximum sentential legis or mens. So it is the duty of the judge to only act on the true intention of the legislature and not to create his own law. He should only act within the scope of the legislature in interpreting. So the function of court is only to expound and not legislate. So the function of court is only to try to find the meaning of the legislature and not legislate themselves, not to make law. Hence, judges are the finishers, the refiners and polishers of the legislation. So if any legislation that comes to their proceeding, then they act as a finisher, refiners and polishers of legislation. Aspects Intention of legislature has two aspects. First, meaning, that which tells what the word means. And the next aspect is purpose and object, that which includes purpose and object of enacting the statute. So any legislature has two aspects. So this, that is, intention of legislature is not found, but is assessed from the statute with combination of meaning of words and purpose or object. So the intention of legislature can always be found by combining meaning of the legislature and purpose and object of the legislature. So what the legislature mean and for what purpose the legislature was created. If these both are combined then the intention of legislature can be found. Guiding lines to frame intention of legislature. So these are the guiding lines whenever we are trying to frame an intention of legislature. First, the context has to be seen, then the subject matter of the legislature has to be seen, then the effects and the consequences of the interpretation, then the spirit of a reason of a law. These are the guiding lines to frame intention of a legislature. Limitation in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, interpreting a legislature. If the court understands anything beyond legislation, then it is called a supposed intention and courts cannot proceed with it. So courts cannot interpret beyond that legislation. They have to interpret within the scope of that legislation. If they go beyond that legislation, it is called supposed intention and the courts cannot further proceed with it. Case law RMD Chamarbagwala vs Union of India So uh, in this it, it was held that a statute is to be construed according to intent of them that makes it. This is the latest case, Asif Iqbal Tanha vs. State of NCT Delhi. So in this case, uh, it was held that the intention of making a UAP Sedition Act was to bring terrorist activity within the scope of parliament. So this was uh, the intention of uh, legislature. The next important concept is commencement of statute. It has been asked for 10 marks and also for 6 marks as a short note. So what is a commencement of a statute meaning? 
the day on which the act in came in force is called commencement of statute so whenever an act is framed the day on which it comes into force it is called the commencement of statute so commencement day for different act for central act the commencement day is the day on which it receives the presidential assent so uh, when a central act is enacted and uh, the day on which it receives the presidential assent it is said to be came into force it is said to be commenced the next is state act so when is a state act commenced the day on which assent of a governor or president is first published in the official gazette of the state so the state act is commenced when it receives assent of governor and president and that assent is further published in the official gazette of the state on that day the state act is commenced for central act we need only presidential assent for state act either governor or presidential assent and published in a gazette rules so an act cannot be said to commence unless it is brought into operation by legislative enactment or by exercise of authority by a delegate empowered to bring it into operation so an act cannot be said to commence unless it is brought into operation by a legislative enactment or exercise of authority so here we can see that there is an authority here for state act we have governor or president and for central act we have president so an act we cannot say and commence unless there is a delegated authority who are empowered empowered to bring it into operation give authority for it exercise their power if enforcement of act left to the discretion of government then writ of mandamus cannot be issued so if the enforcement of the act is totally to the discretion of government and the government enforces it then a writ of mandamus cannot be issued to the government to remove that enforcement but after considerable time has passed after enforcing a statute after commencing a statute then a court can pass a writ to government to consider the question whether it has done a right job or commencing that act the next is court has power to stay operation of statute in exceptional cases court has power to uh, stop the enforcement of the statute but in ex exceptional cases only if act preceded by identical worded ordinance then the commencement date is that of the ordinance so these are the rules of commencement case law r was a secretary of state home department fire brigade union so if act is to be passed by order of minister court can compel minister to enforce so it is a total discretion of the minister to enforce that act then court cannot order that minister to enforce that it was held in this case the next important concept is restrictive and beneficial construction of statute so what do you mean by restrictive restrictive construction so the meaning of statute has a restrictive ambit that is the meaning cannot go beyond what has been defined so this is a restrictive construction so we have to see only the meaning of the statute and we cannot put any logical explanation or a logical thinking in it only what the it means we have to see that so what the statute means we have to go through its meaning it is called a restrictive approach of construction if the court uses means then it is used as a restrictive the next is beneficial beneficial construction it is different from restrictive construction so if there are two or more possible ways of interpreting statute then the meaning which gives a relief and protects the benefit purported to be given by legislation is chosen so if there are two or more possible ways uh, then the one that benefits or gives a pur purpose of legislation then that uh, stat that way if statute is chosen if there are two or more statutes in india it helped in making laws for backward classes so in favor of uh, backward classes uh, the always the law is uh, chosen and this approach is used beneficial case law santaram versus rajendra lal so in case of a welfare legislations must be interpreted in favor of weaker and poor class only so this was beneficial construction the next is taxing statutes so what is the statute for tax under article 265 of indian constitution no tax shall be collected or levied except by authority of law and the next is article 366 clause 28 taxation means any tax general local or special 
so this tax is only for public purpose and it is a different from fees so government can levy fees for its service but tax is uh, different it is for public purpose general principle a taxing statute is a strictly construed so strictly construed means the statute has to be read as it is we cannot put any logical thinking on it the way the statute is it has to be read and followed it is called a strictly construed so a taxing statute is a strictly construed the person is taxed only if he comes within the letter of law so only if he is comes under law to be paid tax only then he has to be taxed then the another principle is avoidance of a double taxation so a person has to cannot be taxed double time then charging and computing sections are constitute integrated code so the section should contain the uh, the law should contain both charging of the tax and also how to compute the tax it should contain both if computing is missing then uh, the tax cannot be charged so these are basic principles general principles of taxing statute the next is stages in imposing tax so declaration of a liability of a persons or a property the first stage is declaration of a liability of the person or property the next is assessment of tax and the third is method of recovery how to recover tax case law azam jha versus expenditure tax officer hyderabad so in this case it was held that logic and reason cannot be of much avail in interpreting a taxing statute so in interpreting a taxing taxing statute logic is not used the way the statute is it has to be read that way only next remedial and penal statute so what do you mean by remedial statute remedial statute means it does not make a offender liable to any penalty in favor of state so remedial statute we don't make the law don't make the offender liable to any penalty the next is a penal statute it is opposite to remedial statute penal in penal statute it provides penalty for disobedience of law strict interpretation of a penal statutes general principles a statute enacting an offence or imposing penalty is strictly construed so we saw in a taxing statute it is it was also strictly construed so in a strictly construed we have to read the law the way it is the statute is read the way it is no logical explanation is required no logical thinking is implied so a statute of a penal statute is strictly construed it is to be read as it is this rule has limited application in modern days but uh, strictly construing a penal uh, statute has limited application in modern days why because in case of ambiguity in case of if there are two or more explanation then in favor of the subject is uh, the courts can take decision and uh, they can take against the legislature so to explain this there is a case law tolaram versus a state of bombay so in this case it was held that if there are two more or two possible reasonable constructions then the court must choose one which exempts subject from penalty rather than which imposes penalty so if there are two possible explanation for a statute then the court should choose one which totally exempts the offender from penalty if there is one rather than the one which imposes penalty so that is why this strictly construed is has limited applicability in modern days So the remaining topic we will take in next video thanks for watching